Okay, thank you very much indeed. Um, first of all, it gives me great pleasure to be here to receive this degree. It's, uh, my connection with UCT spans for almost 40 years. And uh, it's also coincided, at that time, it's also coincided with the principal development of the finite element method. As some of you will know, certainly the engineers among you will know, uh, the related that, that the finite element method has proved over the last five decades to be the single most important contribution to the field of engineering and indeed has impacted strongly on other scientific disciplines. The award also comes at a very appropriate time for me, since most of you will know that Wales, as well as being this year's rugby Six Nations Grand Slam champions, have also within the last 18 months conquered all of the other rugby playing nations, with the exception of New Zealand. We, and that is because we haven't met them yet. And no doubt this anomaly will be rectified in the World Cup later this year. But as well as in having an enviable rugby pedigree, Wales, through Swansea University, has an eminent reputation in the field of finite elements. Uh, Dyer has actually summarized the principal developments in uh, finite elements very well. And uh, my particular uh, activities may focus on solid mechanics applications, although the methodology has spread to many other uh, areas. For example, uh, CFD, that is computational fluid dynamics models of several thousands of kilometers for weather forecasting and tidal predictions. And then on the other scale, we have multi-physics problem of less than one micron, which is one thousandth of a millimeter, used in semiconductor device and nanotechnology simulations. In the area of solid mechanics, the primary interest of most research groups are focused on the development of computational procedures for materials deforming plastically under large strains. These developments are meant that the early 1990s industrial problems could be solved with confidence, leading to applications in failure prediction of structures and the seismic and blast loading, industrial forming processes for plastics and metals, food technology simulations, defense applications involving explosive and impact conditions, and so on. And it was against this background that a strong collaborative research link developed between ECT and Swansea. My first visit to South Africa was in the 1970s when I worked as a consultant on the Kuburg uh, nuclear power station. But I first visited UCT in 1980 when I was invited to give a lecture at one of the first FEMSA conferences, that is FEMSA's Funded Element Method South Africa. And I've almost since then been an annual visit to subsequent FEMSA events, as well as to derivative conference at the SACOM, AFRICOM, and so on. These venues, uh, events have been held in venues throughout South Africa, Joburg, um, Pretoria, Durban, Stellenbosch, for example. But it's true to say that the entire conference series has been driven by the scientific activities of UCT. First, people. It would be impossible to list of all people involved in the collaboration between UCT and Swansea. I will mention some of the people who come to mind, and apologies to those that I miss. Professor John Martin was undoubtedly the leader of finite element research at UCT. After an early career at Brown University in the USA, he established a strong computational mechanics group at UCT, and was responsible for initially inviting me to visit the university. This led to further research activities involving joint projects and participation in conferences and courses. After his untimely death, which occurred before his research potential had been fulfilled, the realization of his vision was taken up by Professor Dyer Reddy, who leads the computational activities at UCT to the present day. On a personal level, I established a very close relationship with, um, and friendship with Professor Bill Doyle. I first met Bill during my visit to UCT in 1980 and remained very close to him and his family until his death last year. Bill led a long and interesting life, 
and was very active until his death in his 90th year. In fact, we used to measure historical events such as the birth of Queen Elizabeth I in 1533 has been only five and a half Bill Doyle lifespans. I'm honored that some of his family, including his wife Judy, is here today. Other names from the early days with whom I spent some pleasant times include uh, Professor Derek Sparks, uh, Dick Blumenthal, Modify Kuanda, Gerald Neury, who's on the platform here today, and latterly Alpha Zingoni. Dick Blumenthal was a source of many anecdotes which included the shot-firing certificate kept on his wall in a broken frame with smashed glass. His wife had allegedly hit him over the head with it, but Dick steadfastly refused to have it prepared. The younger generation included Louis Rosende, Greg Mitchell, who's here, Gina Duffett, Paul Griffin, Andrew Lloyd, Graham Howell, and so on. I call them the younger generation, but several of them have approached retirement themselves. These names come readily to mind, and I had a good interaction with them during my visit to UCT. Also, Greg Mitchell, Gino Duffett, and Paul Griffin spent a considerable period of time at Swansea with me, either as PhD or postdoctoral students. At the same time, Tomasz Rodic, who is currently the director of the Slovenian Space Institute, was studying at Swansea with me for a PhD. We, he became close friends with the UCT contingent and has come to Cape Town to specifically to attend this uh, event today. I should also say that Gra Graham Howell and Andrew Lloyd were the PhD students and lifelong friends of Bill Doyle, and I had the privilege of spending many pleasant hours in the company. Now, it would be impossible to speak here without commenting on the political changes that have taken place over the period that I've been visiting this country. My first visit took place during the apartheid era. It was a difficult and personal decision to come to South Africa. A very good friend of mine, Mike Crisfield, now deceased, was of the strong opinion that I should avoid all contact with the country. But I took the view that I should come and express my distaste for the regime. This led to many vigorous discussions, the forming of new friendships, and late night visits to many dubious establishments in the city and the suburbs. It should be said that many of these excursions took place in the company of Mike Crisfield, who had changed his opinion about visiting the country and became a vociferous advocate for regime change. It should also be noted that Greg Mitchell, who is here today, was an extremely able guide on these excursions. Research. Over the Though the past 50 years of computational modeling has proved to be exciting and rewarding, I believe that the future will be even more challenging. The PTAC report, PTAC is President's Information Technology Advisory Committee, the PTAC report published in 2005, which was commissioned to determine the role of um, competitive science in ensuring America's worldwide competitiveness in science and engineering identified computational modeling as a third pillar of scientific progress. It recognizing that computer simulation will play as equally an important role as theoretical developments and experimentation. With the progress that has taken place in computational speeds and data storage, simulations can be performed within hours of physical processes that occur over hundreds or thousands of years. To put the advances in computing power into perspective, the increase in performance from the most competitive chips of the early 70s to the capabilities of the current multi-core processors implies that if a cal calculation that can be run overnight on today's best desktop computers was started in 1970, we would still be waiting for the solution. The key conclusion of the PTAC report is that the most scientifically and economically promising research frontiers of the 21st century will be conquered by those most skilled with advanced computing technologies and computational science applications. 
Universities worldwide are becoming under increasing pressure to operate more efficiently on both teaching and research fronts. The rapid pace of progress also implies that education and professional training has or will become a lifelong activity with a continuing need for engineers and scientists to update their competencies and skills. Furthermore, most institutions are experiencing a shortfall in human skills with an increasing scarcity of highly trained academic and technical people being evident. With this in mind, collaborative research and teaching programs between universities worldwide is becoming a necessity to meet leading edge technological advances. In this respect, I highly value my association with UCT and hope to continue to foster these links for the foreseeable future. Although the past 50 years of competitional modeling have proved to be exciting and rewarding, I believe that the future will be even more challenging. In addition to the more traditional research areas, many other topics, particularly in the life science and biomedical engineering are emerging. And it is true to say that computational methods offer as many exciting prospects for developments as they did in the past. In conclusion, I believe that all of us who have worked and continue to work in the field of computational modeling should feel privileged by the experience. Thank you.